Hi, this is Marty Stepniak, staff writer for Hospitals and Health Networks. Accountable care organizations rewarding providers for meeting quality goals and slowing the rate of healthcare spending are seen as one key way of bending the cost curve in the industry. While some have struggled initially with the model, others such as Wellmark, Blue Cross, and Blue Shield have shown promise in meeting the goals of the triple aim. I'm joined today by Michael Fay, Vice President of Health Networks for Wellmark, which is the largest insurer in the state of Iowa. Michael, thanks so much for being with me today. Thanks for having me. Could you just start by telling me a little how you've built these uh, arrangements with health systems and maybe the elements of them that have helped you guys succeed where maybe others have failed? Yeah, we've had a longstanding uh, positive relationship with our hospitals and physicians and health systems. And we decided in about 2011 that we needed to try to focus on not only managing the unit cost, but also managing the total cost of care for our members. So we put together a proposal that was built on an accountable care shared savings model. And it started with just focusing on our fully insured members. And we were um, started with three um, organizations that expanded to five. And in 2015, we've now expanded to 13 different uh, hospitals, health systems, and physician organizations. Our model is relatively simple. It basically has three pieces. One is what we call our quality trigger, which says that in order to be eligible for any financial incentives, your quality score has to be equal to your past performance or better. The second piece is we have two financial measures. They get some incentive for beating the trend um, that we're seeing in our healthcare costs, and they get a greater percentage of the savings if they can beat the consumer price index for the all item. And then our final piece is, in addition to using quality as a trigger, if you can improve your quality score or get the best practice, you can get an additional uh, financial incentive. I understand that uh, gaining physician buy-in can be a, a key piece of this. Uh, could you talk a little about the importance of uh, transparency with doctors and, and how you've been able to gain their trust? You're correct. That physician leadership and buy-in is very important. Our model is really built on primary care physicians um, because it uses an attribution model of assigning the patient to an ACO based on their relationship with their personal physician. Um, that personal physician um, relationship was first when we created the what we call value index score and used to measure them, we made sure that that information was shared with them prior to them going in um, to, the, to the shared savings model. So they had an opportunity to not only see their score, but they had sort of a runway of where they could work to improve it before they were held. So one of the things we did with our model was there was no downside risk for the ACOs in the first two years. It was upside only. So we gave them a long opportunity to not only learn about their scores and the measures that were in it, but also have a chance to improve them before they had any real risk in, in our arrangement. The second thing is we worked hard because we knew that as they made changes, they would want to see results very, as quickly as possible. So we update their dashboard every month so they get to see throughout the year how they're performing. So it's a kind of a no surprise uh, model. What we don't do is we don't dictate to each organization exactly how it has to flow through their organization because every organization has their own culture. So we sort of allowed them the ability to take that information and either incorporate it with other programs they're in or to make it separate or condense it and share it inside their own organization to the degree. But they do get every month information on every physician that's part of their organization and how they're performing. Could you tell me a little about the successes so far? I understand you guys were able to save about uh, $12 million in the first two years. Yeah, with our first uh, five in the first two years, our overall savings was a little over $12 million. We just finished up our third year with uh, eight ACOs, and we had another $12 million in savings. And so I think... Um, we would probably say the financial part is really important, but we're probably more pleased with some of the things we've seen on the quality side. We've seen double digit decreases in emergency room visits, admissions, um, managing uh, and improving some of the statistics around cancer screening, well child visits, you know, follow up care, um, better management of chronic patients. So I would say 
you know, there's still work to be done. Um, it's, it's not something that's going to happen overnight, but I think most of our organizations have proven to us that they can be successful if uh, they have the right ability to make those changes, the, the, the analytics and transparency to make those uh, information available to them, and a focus on trying to make sure that they get the best outcomes that they can. Just in, you know, in closing, any words of advice for hospital leaders watching this who are thinking of entering similar arrangements with payers in their markets? I think it's important that you really understand what's important to you as an organization. Um, so what are your strategic plans? Um, where is this fit into yours? Because it does take um, resources. We've had some ACOs in our market that have added resources. Others have sort of reallocated resources. So I don't think it's about putting more people into it. I think it's about realigning your organization and are you ready to do that? You know, we had organizations that waited a year to join our model because they were in the middle of implementing a new EMR or they were in, in the middle of doing something else that was taking a big focus. So I think it's being patient and entering into it at the right time for you. I think it's also clear that uh, how is the information that's being given to them also being shared? So um, we've been working with some of our ACOs. We're now in our fourth year. We will start working on what I would call the consumer transparency of their performance in 2016. Um, so we've given them a lot of time to make improvements, and we didn't just take their data and make it available to the public on day one, which seems to be a big you know, push right now is to make things more than that. I would say, too, making sure people understand. So one of our probably biggest successes after the first year is we put together a big onboarding program. So to get more people inside their organization to understand what it is they're trying to achieve, how it's being measured. Um, so making sure that you have a broad team because it's not something that one person inside your organization is going to be able to do. Michael, thanks so much for being with me today. You bet. Thanks for having me. For HNHN, this has been Marty Stempniak. Thanks for watching.